Cartoons? Who doesn't like cartoons? If they be for kids or adults, considered classic or something for the new generation, cartoons have brought joy, laughter, sometimes even downright fear, into households for generations. Television cartoons have been a favorite form of entertainment of mine for as long as I can remember. So why wouldn't I make a top 10 list of some of my favorite characters? I know what you're thinking. Everyone has talked about their favorite characters and put it on YouTube. And you'd be right. I'm here to do something a little different. I want to talk about the characters that don't get as much love. What I like to call recurring background characters. You know who I'm talking about, right? These are the characters that may have one or two specific episodes about them, then the rest of the time, they're just in the background. Maybe for a quick joke or a line, and then that's it. Everyone loves Fred Flintstone, but nobody shows love to the Great Gazoo. And I'm here to change all that. This is the top 10 animated background characters in TV. For this list, rules, rules, what are the rules? The character has to be from an animated television program, not a theatrical film. So sorry, Sphinx nose guy from Aladdin. They also cannot be considered a main character of the show. So better luck next time, Velma, you, you, goddess. And only one character per franchise. And do remember this is just my opinion. And if you don't agree with it, oh well. It's the internet. And cue the terrible transition! Number 10. Not the Kusa Poop Poop at the Kusa La Goopa Goop. Yeah. Kusa La Goopa Goop is the imaginary friend of Dee Dee in Dexter's Laboratory. He's a happy, lovable dragon with a rainbow tail and a massive, warm, glowing heart on his stomach. Kuzi, as many of the characters call him, first appears in the season 2 episode The Coos is Loose. When Dee Dee convinces Dexter that her imaginary friend is real, he comes to life to annoy Dexter and his work. There are other episodes involving Koozie, like Dee Dee visiting the world that he came from, and another when she uses him as a race car for the wacky races. One of the biggest things I adore about Koozie is the fact that he's voiced by the amazing Dom DeLuise. Known for such voices as Tiger in An American Tale and Itchy from All Dogs Go to Heaven, his fun and giddy voice works perfectly with this character. With the way Koozie's portrayed as a fun imaginary character that's overly happy, I wonder if Inside Out took any inspiration from this. Hmm. Number 9. Actually, dude, it's salt. That's what I said. Sodium chloride. Uh, dude, that would be salt. Some guys just have it all. Skeet from Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius is an enigma. He appears in the episode Men at Work when Gene, Sheen, and Carl get jobs at the local burger joint. Skeet is the manager, and... Employee of the month. He enjoys having Carl and Sheen around who embrace their jobs, while he isn't much of a fan of Jimmy for his know-it-all attitude and miscommunications with simple fast food transactions. He brings the impression of a laid-back attitude, but he's actually quite proud of his work when he's just some dumb teenager working at a fast food joint bossing around Jimmy Neutron. Warning. Not all fast food workers are dumb teenagers. Skeet does not represent the majority of fast food workers, and shame on Tiki Poo for having you think such a thing. Skeet's the one I could probably relate to most out of anyone on the list. Plus, I've probably said Big McThankies from McSpankies more times than I'm proud to admit. Number 8. Watch where you're going, you fool! Dai Lung from Courage the Cowardly Dog. Dai Lung is interesting because nearly every time he's on the program, he shows up out of nowhere. Get it? Nowhere, because the setting is called Nowhere. <clears throat> anyway, Lung is an Asian rival to Courage in most episodes. How do they tell us he's Asian? Well, they play stereotypical music whenever he shows up. Wanna play fetch? <laughs> Many of his appearances involve some sort of slapstick humor out of his misery, like getting abducted or run over by a truck. But he's actually an incredible inventor with technological prowess. One episode he created a robot courage just to show he was a better replacement for the real dog. Because that's what people do, right? But he's probably best known for his signature catchphrase he says after every minor occurrence. Watch where you're going, you fool! 
He's a fantastic background character and great for some funny slapstick in such a dark show. But I do have one question for you all. All you have to do to learn the secret of my success is send me money. <laughs> I'm not too sure. Number seven. Loneliness and cheeseburgers are a dangerous mix. Comic book guy from The Simpsons. This was a difficult one to pick because The Simpsons has arguably one of the biggest animated casts out there. I ultimately decided on the epitome of internet culture, the comic book guy. Real name Jeff Albertson, comic book guy owns the local comic and baseball card store in Springfield. My name is Jeff. He's a fat middle-aged man obsessed with geek culture and still lives with his parents. Uh, hashtag goals? Best known for his catchphrase? The worst episode ever. He always vocally expresses his opinion even when no one is around because of his vast knowledge of a variety of subjects. My biggest appeal to him is the fact that for a series that's 30 years old, he's become what the embodiment of internet culture is. A vast online community that voices their opinion as fact and uses hyperbole to get their point across. Yeah, sounds about right. Worst top 10 ever. Number 6. Dr. Werner Lipschitz from Rugrats. Richard James, watch your language. Sorry, Mom! <laughs> Lipschitz isn't seen much in this series, but he always seems to be on the mind of Tommy's mom, Dee Dee. Oh, Stu, please. This is a great man. We can learn from him. Obsess much? We don't actually fully see him until the Season 2 episode, A Visit from Lipschitz, where he shows up at the Pickles' house and is left to watch Tommy and Chucky while the family is out. The episode is quite strange, though, as he just eats all kinds of food from the fridge, and then he takes a bubble bath! What the hell? When I was younger, I used to watch this episode, and the thing that appealed to me most was actually the ending. The episode has the famed psychologist get upset that he can't handle the two babies, something you'd think that he could. The babies feel bad for him and end up climbing on his back and having a joyous time with the stranger. This struck me as one of the happiest moments in TV for some reason. I'm not sure if it was because it was such a happy ending with this character that I like so much, or the fact that I wonder what the aftermath was with the family with their tub used and their food gone. Number five. Sorry, had to. Miss Sarah Bellum from the Powerpuff Girls. Miss Bellum is the very definition of a background character because, well, Every time you see her, you don't see her damn face! No one really knows why we as the audience isn't shown Miss Bellum's face, but 90s cartoons seem to like to do that for some reason. For every boy that watched this show, she was a specimen with her perfect hourglass figure and soft, sultry voice that could even make Minnesota melt. I'm so glad you asked. Granted, she's more than just a pretty face. <laughs> She was always by the side of the doofus mayor of Townsville and even took control of the situation when many times that he couldn't. Some highlights include an episode addressing man-hating and another one with her kicking total ass. In a time where there weren't too many strong female characters represented, Miss Bellum used what little screen time she had to teach the Powerpuff Girls how to be true, strong women. And I think that's what makes her such a great character for this list. Plus she's a fox. Number four. South Park is another show that I could have picked from a huge array of characters. From Wendy, the Tucker Jabs guys, Token, and even Satan. I contemplated on quite a few people for this number, and I think I found the perfect character that best impacts in and out of the background. Who is that? Timmy! Yes, good old Timmy. One of the few mentally challenged kids in South Park, Timmy is the personification of pure joy whenever he is on the screen. As the series goes on, he seems to hang out with Jimmy, the other paraplegic kid in school. Also helps that Jimmy is also one of the few things Timmy can say besides his own name. While it's easy to laugh at Timmy for his over-the-top mannerisms, Timmy can convey some emotional moments for the series. Not bad for a guy that just likes to yell. Like The Simpsons, South Park has been on for so long, a background character like Timmy has had a few episodes about him, like his first appearance when he was the singer in a local garage band, and when he played, wait for it, Helen Keller in a Thanksgiving musical. Yeah, that was a thing. 
I know bigger fans of the show would have rather have chosen Butters as their favorite pick, but I think Butters' popularity has grown so much throughout the years that he's grown too close to the main cast and I couldn't pick him over Timmy. And yes, the Lords of the Underworld are nothing without those lit vocals. Number three. Some could say that a background character would have pretty limited lines of dialogue. And yeah, for the times they're on screen, they may only have one quick line and that's it. But what about a character that has absolutely no words spoken at all? It's never hard to talk to you, though you stomp me with your silence. I feel so naughty pining here for your happy face's guidance. My best friend. Plank from Edda and Eddie is strange for all the reasons you may expect. As in, he's literally just a plank of wood. He isn't some magic thing that comes to life for the audience and then winks at you. He's Johnny's imaginary friend. But don't tell him that. It's difficult to understand how Plank operates because at certain points it looks like he's alive. Like when he's driving through the big city. But then there are times where he is what he is. Just a simple piece of wood! Yet you always seem to remember Plank with his smile, his off-centered eyes, and that little chip at the top of him. It's also funny to know that Johnny was actually based on a kid in the creator's neighborhood. That kid would hold on to a blanket and not just, just a, a simple piece- Alright, that's enough. Number two. You used to go to plenty of events in your younger days. With your friends, you would go on all kinds of adventures and have a blast. When you got older though, the opportunities to do those things became less and less. You just do your job, develop lazy habits, and sit there at work having nobody notice you. You wish you could go back to those days, but you have stuck to what you're doing now, just second nature to you. Oh, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about Scruffy from Futurama. Scruffy is the lazy janitor that sits around Planet Express looking at porn magazines that everyone needs to be reminded of who he is. Who are you? Scruffy? The janitor? I've never seen you before. I've never seen you before, neither. He's out other jobs, like being a masseuse for Bender early on. While he doesn't do much with his job at Planet Express, he still believes in the company and owns almost 40% of the company's shares. I think this is someone we should all look up to. Get out of here, Abraham Lincoln. This is a true American. A man that does his duty. A man that spends on the economy looking at... Probably American women. Scruffy is a man of very little words. That man is a true patriot and should be loved by all. God bless you, Scruffy. God bless you. Number one. Throughout history, there have been quotes by the greatest minds of all time. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. FDR. Iconic. The future depends on what you do today. Mahatma Gandhi. Brilliant. You can go through a whole list of these and nothing. Nothing would compare to some of the greatest words spoken in the history of this world. I don't know how Fred Fish gets up in the morning. Anytime there is some sort of bad thing happening in Bikini Bottom, Fred has always been the one on the receiving end, always shouting the same thing. How this guy continues going is beyond me. His job as a janitor? Terrible. When he flag trolled for the marching band? A disaster. This guy can never catch a break. I mean, yeah, he discovered the greatest thing ever. Hey, all you people. Hey, all you people. Hey, all you people, won't you listen to me? I just had a sandwich. No ordinary sandwich. A sandwich filled with jellyfish jelly. And just recently, he had a whole episode dedicated to, what else? His... his leg. Fred Fish is the quintessential background character. You can turn on nearly every episode of SpongeBob SquarePants, and he will be around. Eating at the Krusty Krab, working different jobs, anywhere. Fred is our favorite resident of Bikini Bottom. No legs about it. Oh, come on, that was a good one. So that was the top 10 animated background characters in TV, and what did you think? Were there any that I missed? Some that you would have put instead? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel, and heck, even ask me what I should do next. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and always remember, you could be the background character in someone's life, but you could become a main one in later seasons. <clears throat>
And thank you to 8th grader Rebecca H for your input to the script. Love you, Becky. The birds and the bees are flying in the trees. The sun is in the sky, and just for you and I. The sky is perfect blue, and the cloud puts all of you. It's a sign from above that shows that we're in love.